Hello friends, this is Scott, and this video has taken two months to complete. I'm finally getting my pond done. Now you've noticed in previous videos that I've been taking dirt from this area, because I need to excavate, and I used it in various other projects. But now is the time where I had to bring in a little bit of topsoil, and I lined the outside ring of the pond, and I still have to carve out the middle uh, just to get it to the right depth. I want to have a deep end and a more shallower end, so I'm going to dig a step here at the shallow end. Now here's a look at what I've got going on. Now this is not a how-to, it's how-I video, but I'm going to throw in some tidbits of what you should probably do when you're, when you're doing these types of uh, pond builds. Now I'm just uh, raising up the sides. Now my yard is a little bit sloped, so it's very critical that your pond is level. You definitely don't want a pond where you've got water on one side and then you've got a whole bunch of exposed liner on the other. So since I have to excavate the middle and get a little deeper, I'm going to use this dirt and I'm going to pile it on the sides. Yeah, just build it up a little bit because I know I'm going to be low on the, on the downhill side, which is toward the fence. Here's where I'm going to have a little bit of a step down. Uh, so I'm going to dig that out a little bit. And I'm not going to put sand in the bottom of this uh, this hole, or this pond, because I've already put in a lot of uh, soils and, and loose material. Uh, there could be some sharp little sticks in here I've got to watch out for. I don't want to puncture the liner, but overall this is a pretty, uh, pretty even material and not a lot of coarse material in here. For best results, it is best to put sand down. That is what's recommended, but I don't have any sand today, so I'm not going to worry about that. And I'm going to tamp it down though. I've got to make sure that it's level, but first off I want to, you know, not super hard. I'm just trying to get it flattened out so that I can, when I put the liner down, it'll, uh, it'll just kind of roll over this little bit of an edge. So I'll do a little tamping and then uh, see how my level is. Got to do all the way around and I still think I'm not level. I'm looking at it and I'm just like, ah, I think I'm going to have to add some dirt, but... The way I check level is, you can use a water level. I won't get into what that is or explain it, but I just use a board that's, that's flat and I have my level. As you can see, I'm checking it out. Now I'm way low on the downhill side. So I've got to take some dirt from one side and I've got to move it over to the other side. So uh, that's what, uh, just takes a few scoops here, but I'm gonna totally level this, uh, this area out to the best of my ability. It won't be perfect, but it won't be too shabby. It'll be uh, pretty close to what it needs to be. I have to make sure the downhill side is maybe just a tad a little bit higher because if it's lower, I'm going to have water leaking out of the pond toward the fence area. So after I'm done, uh, I'm going to pack it down again and we'll just see if how level I am on the next measurement to see. I want to measure all different directions. Uh, so you'll see me with the board here in a minute. Uh, I'll just be putting it at different angles and uh, checking everything to make sure that I'm as close as I can be. And if I am a little low, I can always add a little soil up underneath it. Um, we'll see how that kind of goes. I have this bamboo sitting behind me that is going to put up some shoots probably underneath the pond, so I hope it doesn't puncture. They're usually very soft as they're coming in, so I, I hope it just kind of, the pond weight of the water will keep them from sprouting up through. Now here I am just uh, pushing the, level, the board around and checking level. And it's not perfect, but it's, it's pretty close. After tapping the dirt down, I am a little low in a couple places, so I'm going to go ahead and grab the shovel just to be extra cautious, and I'm going to add a little more dirt to a couple places, remove some and move it to other areas. Again, I'm not trying to be perfect, but you know the pond's going to look a little goofy if it's not uh, level, and it's also going to leak, and it's uh, just not going to look good, so I need to make sure that I have some uh, pretty, pretty good measurements here. That's looking a lot better with just a couple scoops. Measure, keep measuring around and check all these different angles and uh, making sure that I'm looking pretty good. And the true test will be as I'm filling the pond, uh, the pond will tell me <laughs> itself whether I'm, I've done a good job or not. See Mr. Lincoln running around in the background, he's always barking at the people walking on the fence. So it's looking pretty good. I think we're about ready to, to start installing the liner in just a minute. Here's a close-up of the liner. It's an 8 foot by 10 foot and I hope it's big enough. So I'm going to do a little time lapse because this is, you know, I'm fighting with this <laughs> this liner and it was, that's eh, the least favorite part of the project is, is fighting plastic. It's like a plastic bag trying to open it, you know. But anyway, I've got it uh, 
kind of stretched out, put a few uh, flagstone pavers just to hold it down. And I'm gonna start filling with the water. And I don't wanna fill it all the way because if I don't wanna be yanking this uh, material around and pulling it over material that could possibly tear it. So I'm just gonna stretch it out as the, as the pond's filling. I will just uh, walk around the pond and I'll, I'll adjust as we go before we have too much water in the pond. I wanna get most of the, the wrinkles out of the plastic. The water will help me with that. And then I'll just uh, keep on moving it around as, uh, as the water's filling. These are the rocks I'm putting in, they're pond pebbles, and this stuff comes really sandy. So you've got to rinse these out or you're just going to, you know, just make your pond really cloudy. And as you can see, the water's filling up and it's looking pretty clear. So I don't want to add a bunch of sand and dirt to, to the pond right at this point. So I'm going to first start out with putting them uh, each bag and, you know, breaking it in half and put it in two buckets and using the hose and just rinsing off the rocks and, and trying to get them as clean as possible. Uh, with this method and I'm squirting it around and uh, I'll be dumping the bucket here and, and uh, just letting the, the sand rinse out of the out of the bucket but I did what I found was this was not the best way to do this uh, as you'll see here in a minute I'm very gingerly trying to put the first bucket of rocks into the pond and as you see I didn't get much of the sand off so I'm gonna dump them out on the patio and I'm gonna rinse them with the hose and uh, that's the best way I found uh, so I just spent more time because I don't want a bunch of sand in this pond. It's just going to make a mess. So, so I spent quite a bit of time uh, rinsing the rocks and uh, getting them ready. And then I just pulled them back in the bucket and then dumped them back into the, into the pond. As you can see here, I'm still cloudy after I dumped the rocks in the bottom. I'll need to add a few more rocks in the future, but uh, it'll all settle in. Now, I'm not putting a uh, pump filter into this. I'm just going to put aeration because I want to use this as a, as a fertilizer source. I want fish emulsion uh, for my plants. So I'll just suck the bottom and use it as a, as a fertilizer. Now here we go. It's starting to clear up a little bit and you can see the rocks on the bottom. I don't have them all the way up the sides, but I'll have to get some more rocks over time. But it's still a little cloudy, but it looks pretty good. I put the flagstone pavers around the edges. And then here's what I'm using to finish my pond. I've got an extension cord that I'll plug into the chicken coop uh, cord area. I've got a valve box, sprinkler valve box. I've got some bubbler hose. And I've got two different types of bubblers. I've got a cheapo and then I've got a more uh, expensive one. And then here's the Brezza, which is a compressor for the air and some electrical tape and scissors. So this is all I'm using to finish my pond. So here's the more expensive bubbler. It's a round bubbler, and then the cheapo is the green one. And it, the bubbler's got two ports, so I'll cut this, this uh, cord in half and use them and put it in the pond. As you can see, I've got the, the valve box over the bubbler because it's not definitely not waterproof. You've got to keep it out of the water. So that's what I've, I put it up on a little bit of a brick. And I've run two hoses because it has two ports. As you can see, I've got an extension cord into the other cord. I hope that uh, <laughs> it's not designed to be outside, but it's the best I can do at this point. I could stick it into the in the egg leg box of the chicken coop, and I may do that if I have problems. The water has chemicals and chlorine in it, so this is a dechlorinator. And so I'm, as you see, I'm measuring very, very specifically. There's a, a ratio that you do by the length and the width and then the depth of the pond. So I just did half a bottle. That sounded good to me. And here I am, and I did go to the fish store and the plant store, and you see so there's some plants in the pond already. I decided to just put regular goldfish in. I bought 10 to start with. Uh, the pond should stabilize over time before you add fish, but I'd had the plants in there and the bubblers, and I just wanted, I'm excited to get going. And, and uh, these are 34 cents a fish. They're generally designed for feeders for other fish, so I hope I don't lose them, but if I do, it's not the end of the world. But I'm just going to ease them in. I had them so, you know, just kind of in the bag, floating in the, in the pond for a while, just so that the water temperature would acclimate uh, with their water in the bag. And here they are. And I did throw a little bit of flake food in. And uh, they were pretty aggressive at the beginning. To, as you see here, there's some coming up to feed on the, on the flakes. As they went on, they pretty much hit at the bottom, and I couldn't get them to come back up and feed anymore. Um, so... They're doing okay. Uh, the next day I went and got uh, 15 more, so I've got 25 goldfish, and uh, that'll be good enough. They grow pretty large, and so that should be a full pond, and I'll probably lose a few. So we'll see how it goes. I wonder if I'm going to have any birds uh, stop in the yard and, and start eating fish. Uh, we shall see. 
at the plant store I did buy a skimmer and so I'm just going to use it just to get some of the leaves and, and some of the debris out of the pond right now. So it's clearing up. Uh, Mr. Lincoln's coming to check it out and uh, he's wondering what this pond is all about. Most of my projects go. I stopped at my favorite nursery, Arbor Day Nursery in Riverton, and I picked up another two cubic yards of bark. Now, I don't need two cubic yards for this part of the project. I need it for other areas of the yard, and I'll, you'll see some of that in a future video. So I'll spare you the, uh, the truck loading uh, portion and all my bucket carrying and unloading, yeah, but I'll show you how I, I'm just being pretty careful because I don't want a bunch of this material in the pond itself, but I'm just going to cover the liner up. And behind me, I'm going to put another wall like the one you see uh, with the cabbages, the brassicas. So um, I don't want to put a lot of bark here because I need to scoop some dirt out and I need to level it and I need to build a wall. So just going to do enough just to cover up the, the uh, plastic at this point, the liner, just so it looks a little bit better. The chickens are pretty interested in this project and the most skittish one is the white leghorn. And, and even that bird is over here checking things out. So they like to hang out with me a little bit and uh, see what's going on. And they like to reach their necks through the fence and pick at the dirt. So they got a few bugs in this process, I think. But I'm just going to go all the way around and uh, I've got to throw some bark into the bamboo. And uh, so I'm just going to try to just cover up the, the, the liner just so that it's not visible. Now here I'm adding bark around the uh, little irrigation box that I put the, the uh, air compressor in. I want to make sure that the air can get to it. Uh, I want to keep it dry as best I can. Uh, the bark will help a little bit with that, but we'll just kind of see how it goes. On a heavy rain, I'll have to check it and, uh, and hope I don't blow up my circuits in my house. <laughs> but anyway, it's hooked into the chicken coop, uh, so I think everything will be okay. It's on one breaker, so if something happens, it'll just pop the breaker. So here we go. Here's a look at the pond. It still needs to get less cloudy and uh, clear up a little bit but the fish are hiding and the bubblers are working. It didn't take long for the bird life to find the pond as this bird just started visiting as uh, well we were finishing up. Not really too scared or skittish but uh, just getting a drink and, and looking around. And here's the pond, uh, the finished product. It's as good as it's going to get for right now. I'll be adding other features into the pond and I'll add more bark and other things but a view from the deck it looks pretty good. So thanks for watching, and I appreciate you, and please subscribe if you like what you see. Thank you.